driving towards net zero carbon by 2030. When it comes to sustainable fuels, it represents, uh, as we said before, uh, another alternative to, to, to EVs. Welcome to my channel, Javonias. This trivial investigation has taken me down a rabbit hole. The deeper I dig, the more I find. Since my last video about Shell, I've been snooping around Jeevo's LinkedIn page, and I have found even more connections to Shell. We have David Parker, a commercial manager for RNG at Shell, Benoit Poulet, OEM technical interface manager at Shell, and last but not least, Adam Harrison. And he pressed the like button on Jeevo's post about Chevron and Kivit. And this guy is easy to miss, since the short job description doesn't say which company he's employed at. You have to click on his profile and even scroll down to find out that he has a key position at Shell and has been with the company for more than 12 years. And according to his resume, he's formed a new aviation fuels marketing joint venture in Denmark, secured landmark deals to supply SAF to Air France, DHL and Lufthansa, and developed and launched a refreshed growth and energy transition decarbonization strategy. And this colleague confirms that Adam is working closely with Shell's supply and trading arms. Now let's have a look at his professional skills. So these are people who are more on the strategic side. We have lots of really interesting discussions of people who are in the supply chain. They're trying to figure it out because they know they have to get a position in here. There aren't that many ways to do it. And when scrolling through the 99 companies he's following, you find Jivo among them. As I was scrolling through the 255 likes on this Jivo post, this name came up. Benoit Poulet, specializing in hydrogen as the OEM Technical Interface Manager at Shell. His profile reveals that he is also involved in Shell's Formula One team. And for some reason, this guy follows Jivo on LinkedIn. A closer look at his career tells us that he shifted position in April last year and is now working as a strategic project leader targeting the standardization of advanced hydrogen for heavy-duty vehicles. But up until July in 2021, he was the Formula One fuel development manager and Shell trackside team leader, as well as Shell's technical authority for Formula One products and projects. So according to this information, Benoit Pelay was reassigned for another position at Shell last summer. But according to Shell's official website, it looks like Benoit Pelay is still a part of the Formula 1 team. Maybe they just forgot to update. But it says here that he's working with a team of scientists and engineers to co-create new fuel formulations for the new Scuderia Ferrari power unit. Shell has officially announced their ambition to decarbonize motorsport. Together with their partner Scuderia Ferrari, they have set a goal to reach net zero by 2030. Driving towards net zero carbon by 2030. Istvan Capitani, Global Executive Vice President in Shell, wrote in his LinkedIn post that Shell and Ferrari will work together to develop options in the field of biofuel and that they are fully committed to find innovative sustainability solutions. Technological ways to generate sustainable fuels. Can you explain briefly, just give us a little bit of an overview about the different options? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, indeed, and there's a beauty of it that uh, uh, to get uh, sustainable fuel, there are different kind of ways. And that's one of the reasons why I think the fuel suppliers, you know, would uh, uh, like to work on this, because this is very innovative and it could be very, very important uh, going forward. And Formula One is the right uh, test bed for, uh, for these kind of activities. Um, Madia mentioned uh, ethanol, and uh, clearly I mentioned also be very strong in this. Uh, uh, we do have uh, our joint venture in Brazil, which is one of the biggest ethanol producer in the world. And we're already producing even second generation ethanol uh, in commercial quantity. And as far as I know, we are the only ones who are doing that. It's important to, to note because then it's an ethanol which is not produced from the edible part uh, of the sugar cane, but from the agricultural leftover. We also do have uh, a patented uh, a solution called I Square, which is producing uh, dropping quality fuels from uh, agriculture or household waste. 
What makes this so interesting is that Geo's renewable ISO octane was used by the Infinity Red Bull Formula 1 racing team already back in 2014, and the Red Bull racing team won multiple Grand Prix races using Geo's fuel. Working together with Total, Geo's renewable ISO octane was successfully blended into Formula 1 racing fuel formulations. Now here comes the kicker. Can someone explain why Jiwoo is following Shell Motorsport team on Twitter? And the strange thing is that Jiwoo isn't following any other Formula 1 racing team on Twitter. Not even their previous partner Red Bull Racing Team. And strangely enough, Jiwoo also follows Shell's official Twitter account. But Jiwoo is not following in any of BP's Twitter account, even though BP is one of their customers. Another customer, Total Energies. Mm -mm. No, no, not followed by Jiwoo either. A bit strange, isn't it? So this is David Parker who liked this post by Jivo. And he's a commercial manager for RNG at Shell. And we do know Jivo produces RNG. Since joining Shell, David Parker has been in numerous roles, leading projects and people in a wide range of disciplines, including renewable natural gas, RNG, novel advanced biofuels, nature-based solutions, and many other bioroutes to products. He was assigned to commercial manager for RNG last August, but up until then, he was managing Biodomain, a new energies research and technology. Okay, so this guy seems pretty all around when it comes to biofuels. So what do we make of all of this? Can all of this just be completely random? Let's see. We have several people in key positions at Shell connected to Jivu through LinkedIn. And remember this guy, Brian Stonehouse the head of sustainability and risk at Shell Aviation, connected with Jiva's chief commercial officer, Tim Cesarek. Stonehouse specializes in carbon management and aviation biofuel. His core areas of expertise are commercial negotiation, supply chain management, and trading and risk management. And among the colleagues that have endorsed Stonehouse set of skills, you find him. Hmm, Adam Harrison. In this Q&A, published in November last year, Brian Stonehouse stated that Shell is working to collaborate, to supply, and to invest, with the aspiration of offering SAF as a significant part of Shell's fuel portfolio. He said, Our focus is on making investments for the long term, from world-scale production facilities to emerging technologies. Ok, so let's zoom out and summarize all the facts. G was having discussions with energy transition companies, and Pat Gruber defined these people as strategic. Shell is in the energy transition business and has a clear strategy to achieve its long-term goal of net zero emissions. People in key positions at Shell have full knowledge about Jivo and are connected to both Jivo and Tim Cesare through LinkedIn. Shell is in need of SAF, biofuel and RNG to be able to reach net zero. And Jivo offers all of these products with net zero emissions, and they also need customers like Shell to be able to scale up its production. And think about this, Jivo's pipeline of contract negotiations went from 13 to 30 billion dollars during the last six months of 2021. So there must be some giant ass companies lined up here. So here's my theory. I think these people at Shell have done their diligence on Jivo. And since Jivo offers a wide range of net zero fuel products Shell is interested in, I believe each person here have done their diligence within their area of expertise. Call them energy transition companies. And Shell is in pool position, together with BP, when it comes to energy transition. But if Jivo enters a strategic partnership with Chevron, would he still be able to sign a deal with Shell? Well, even though the two oil majors are competitors, they are pretty used to cooperate if there is an opportunity for a win-win deal. Since most of the big oil companies have committed to be net zero by 2050, collaboration across the industry will be both necessary and beneficial. 
many questions still remain unanswered. Is Shell looking for a strategic partner, a new supplier, or a potential acquisition? We can only guess what's going on behind the curtains. This is my fifth video on this topic. And with all the facts, odd circumstances, and the multiple connections that I've presented in these videos, I think it's fair to say that Jivo is definitely on Shell's radar. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also want to thank you guys for all the support and appreciation you leave in the comment section. I know I don't have a big audience, but you guys are a great audience. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't hesitate to press that red button before you leave. I make these videos just to inform and entertain, and you should not consider them as any kind of financial advice. I hope to release a new video soon, but until then, bye bye.